Hello everyone. In today's video, I will be teaching you about the servo system theory of craniofacial growth. So various theories and concepts have been described in literature to explain the growth of the craniofacial complex which include the genetic theory, sutural theory, cartilaginous theory, functional matrix, servo system theory, multifactorial theory, V principle and counterpart principle. But in today's video, we will be focusing on the servo system theory. This theory was popularized by Alexander Petrovic who theorized a cybernetic model to explain the influence of various factors. For those of us who are unaware, cybernetics refer to the science dealing with the control and communication both in machines as well as living things. In even simpler terms, any such system when provided with input processes it and produces an output, just like feeding numbers to a computer would give you the product. Therefore, this theory or the servo system theory is also called the cybernetic theory of growth. What you see on your screens is a flowchart explaining the system with all its components. I get it, it looks a bit overwhelming with all its non-biological terms. But trust me, we will understand each component and uncover what it corresponds to in our biological process of growth. The first component is command, that is a signal which is not affected by the output and it tells the system what is to be done. And it includes the hormones and in case of growth to be specific, somatomedin. The next component is reference input, which is the input created by the action of command. In our case, it refers to the sagittal position of the maxilla, which is established by the action of somatomedin through its action on various reference input elements, which include the cartilage, muscle and bone of the maxilla. Next, the peripheral comparator analyzes the reference input and judges the performance of the system through performance judging elements, where occlusal contact between the upper and lower jaw serves as the comparator while efficiency of mastication is the performance. Any deviation from an optimal contact or performance in the form of deviation signals is detected by the central comparator which further sends signals to various components in order to bring about the final output of the control system. The actuator corresponds to the motor cortex while the coupling system is the lateral pterygoid muscle and the retrodiscal pad and the control system is the final output of forward placement of mandible. Now that we have seen the components, let us understand how this system operates. A command in the form of release of growth hormone induces the outward and forward growth of the maxilla due to which the position or the reference input of the maxilla changes. Owing to this growth, there is a change in the original ideal cusp to fossa relationship of the teeth which leads to a poor performance or improper mastication which is sensed by the peripheral comparator and this sends a deviation signal to the CNS which has by default learned the ideal teeth relation and compares the present disturbed relation to the original one and passes signal to the motor cortex which further activates the lateral pterygoid muscle and retrodiscal pad in order to position the mandible forward by growth at the condyle, thereby establishing a cusp to fossa or ideal teeth relation. Therefore, to summarize, a change in position of the maxilla or a change in the occlusion by the action of hormones or the introduction of the functional appliances bring about this system in action which subsequently results in the establishment of a stable occlusion by positioning the mandible forward. And so, servo system also explains the action of the functional appliances used.